Optifine settings for 1.19.2. That's what we're going over in this video. Now, first things first, I do want to mention you need to start off in the Minecraft launcher, right? And you should probably also have Optifine, which, by the way, you can check out in the description down below, our in-depth guide on how to get Optifine. I mean, this goes over everything. Downloading, installing, playing Optifine. We even mention Optifine settings somewhere in here. It's, it's, it's insane. Increasing FPS with Optifine. Here you go. So it's all covered in this sort of article, and it goes over everything. We also have the video at the top showing you how to get Optifine. So it's all here. However, to get started, you want to be in the Minecraft launcher here. And once you're in the Minecraft launcher, click on installations and then find your Optifine installation. If it's not here, by the way, just make sure mod is checked and it'll appear. Click on the three dots on the right hand side, click on edit, and then in this screen, you want to go ahead and make sure your resolution is set appropriately. Now, for this video, we're actually going to do 1920 by 1080. That's actually what I would recommend. That's 1080p and going to be good for most people. However, in some cases, you might want to go less because the lower your resolution is here, the more you're going to be getting out of the FPS and performance side. Now, with that being said, the goal here isn't actually to get the most FPS in Minecraft. It's to get the most FPS while still making Minecraft playable and look good, right? We don't want Minecraft to look absolutely horrible. We want to actually be able to play it and actually have it look somewhat okay while getting a lot of FPS. So with this, we're going to go with 1920 by 1080 for me because it's easier for you to see in the video. You can go higher if you want, but lower is going to produce more FPS. It's also worth noting adding more RAM. By default, Minecraft has this as XMX2G. 2G is the amount of RAM Minecraft has, 2 gigabytes. I would recommend upping this to XMX 4G for vanilla Minecraft. Since this is an Optifine settings video, I'm not going to go more in depth with RAM than that, but just know adding more RAM than 4 gigabytes for vanilla Minecraft is insane. So you should be fine with 4 gigabytes. Just changing the JVM arguments at the beginning to dash, capital X, lowercase mx, 4, and then capital G, exactly like that. Go ahead, save this, and now we can open up Minecraft with Optifine. While we're waiting on Minecraft to open up, how about I miss from our sponsor, Apex Minecraft Host, and go to the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex to start your very own 24-hour DDoS-protected Minecraft server. At Apex, you can do anything and everything you want with your Minecraft server, from adding plugins to adding mods to adding over 200 mod packs with one-click installation. Yes, they have support for 200 mod packs with one-click installation. At Apex, they also have 24-hour, seven-day-a-week chat support. So should you have an issue any time of the day, they are there to help you out with a real person right away. We actually love to stay back so much that we host all of our Minecraft servers on on Apex Minecraft hosting, so go check them out at the first link down below, the breakdown.xyz slash Apex. Thanks to them for sponsoring this video. So nevertheless, here we are in the Minecraft launcher, and once we're here, we want to go ahead and click on Options, and then Resource Packs. You don't want to have any Resource Packs on by default, but it is worth noting that we're actually setting up Optifine here to work with a lot of Resource Packs, so keep that in mind. However, I would recommend to get started, not having any installed, you can install them later. There are a few settings here that you can change around later, but for right now, we're going to make them to where you're going to get the most FPS and still make Minecraft very playable. Nevertheless, after you've settled resource packs, let's go in to video settings. From here, we can go ahead and start setting everything up. Truthfully, Fast graphics is what I'm going to recommend, and render distance, I'm going to recommend 12 chunks. Normal render distance in vanilla, by the way, is 8 chunks, so I'm thinking most people can squeeze out 12 chunks even though you are playing Minecraft while still getting a decent amount of FPS. However, if you do get in-game and you're still having lag, you could lower this down to 8 chunks and be perfectly fine. 8 chunks is still very playable in my opinion. Nevertheless, we're going to go with 12. Smooth lighting needs to be set to off. Simulation distance. I turned this all the way down because, as you can see, the lower the better on this. However, you can turn this up if you want, you know, mobs to come at you from farther away, basically. But overall, 5 should be perfectly fine. I've never noticed any issues. Smooth lighting level, turn that off as well. Frame rate, turn that to unlimited. That's going to give you the ability to get tons and tons of frame rate out of Minecraft. You can limit this at 60, though, and you're going to have any issues if you limit this at 60. Truthfully, limiting it at 60 is probably best because you're going to get a smoother gameplay, but I want to see how much FPS we can get, so we're going to go unlimited. GUI scale doesn't really matter. Technically, smaller is better, but it's not going to make too much of a difference. Entity shadows we want to turn off. Brightness doesn't matter. Neither does attack indicator. Dynamic lights need to be turned off. Dynamic FOV is your personal preference. So that's all the main video settings. Shaders need to be turned off. With that being said, I'm going to show you what this setup looks like with shaders. It's kind of impressive. 
There are two shaders packs I'd recommend. Makeup Ultra Fast and Vanilla Plus are very high FPS shaders. We'll also link in the description down below some other high FPS shaders as well, specifically our video on that where it goes over a few different ones with real FPS numbers. So go check that out if you want to get shaders, but we will show you what the FPS is with shaders once we're done here. Nevertheless, moving on from there, let's go into the quality tab. As far as mitmap levels go, you want to turn these off. They're very resource intensive. Mitmap type, let's turn that to nearest. Doesn't really as matter as much because the mitmap levels are off, but still worth doing. Antiscribe filtering and anti-aliasing need to be off. Emissive textures need to be off. Random entities, we're going to leave those on. Better grass, turn that to fast. Better snow, you can leave that on. Custom fonts, custom colors, we're going to leave on. Connected textures, turn off. Natural textures, we're going to leave those on. Custom sky can be left on. All of these custom items and GUIs and entity models, those can all be left on, but they're all with resource packs. So for example, if we hover over custom entity models here, it says the custom entity models are supplied by the current resource pack. So by default, these won't be there. But like I said, I want you to be able to turn on a resource pack and get everything that resource pack has to offer. So that's why we're leaving all of these on. Should you get in game and you have some lag, come back here, turn off entity models, right? Turn off custom items and maybe it'll increase your FPS with that resource pack. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and leave all of these on because we wanna use a resource pack. Distortion effects is your preference as well as FOV effects. Both of these completely up to you. Moving on from there, let's go into details. In the details tab, we wanna turn our clouds to fast, right like so, and cloud height, it's up to you, truthfully. It doesn't matter where they're at. I like them at about 50%, not too high in the sky, but not too low either. So that's kind of the perfect middle ground, in my opinion. For trees, we want to go ahead and turn these to fast. Rain and snow, we want to turn that to fast as well. You can turn that off if you don't like rain and snow, but it will only affect your single player world, so I would recommend fast. Sky, we can leave that on. Same thing with stars and the sun and moon. Show capes is personal preference. I like to see everybody's optifying capes, so I'm leaving that on. As far as fog goes, you can leave that to off, and fog starts, truthfully, up to you, because uh, we have it turned off. View bobbing is personal preference, so are held item tool taps and the auto save indicator. Swamp colors, unfortunately, we're going to turn those off because having them on can increase some lag in swamps. And as far as the vignette goes, we want this to be set to fast. Alternative blocks, this is another resource pack thing where again, you can turn it off if you're getting lag with resource packs, but we're going to leave it on by default because we want those resource packs to work. As far as entity distance, we're going to turn those to 50% and bio blend. Sadly, we have to turn off, even though that is one of my favorite features. We are going to have to turn it off for lag reasons. Now we can go ahead and click done and move over to the performance tab. In the performance tab, we want to turn render regions on, fast render on, smart animations on, fast math on, and smooth FPS and smooth world on. You noticed I had those off though, and the reason is because if you turn smooth FPS and smooth world on, it will smooth your FPS, meaning you won't have lag spikes and things like that, but it will technically lower your overall FPS as well. That's a good thing actually. You don't need more than 60 FPS, so there's no reason to get 500 FPS, and while you're getting that, having lag spikes, right? So having these on is good, but uh, we're going to turn them off because I want to show you what you can get out of FPS later in this video, and having those off is how I can do that. Chunk updates, turn that to a 1. Dynamic updates, turn that on. Lazy chunk loading, turn that on as well. And chunk builder needs to be semi-blocking. This is a newer feature, and it's very, very interesting. I'd recommend uh, hovering over it and giving it a read there. But just so you know, if you don't understand what's going on there, no worries, just turn it to semi-blocking, you'll be good. Let's go ahead and click done there and move on to animations. Truthfully, uh, all off is your best situation here. Animations, super laggy in Minecraft, kind of unoptimized in a way, in my opinion. Turning them off is your best situation. But if you don't like that and you want some animations like water animation or lava or something like that, you can turn them on individually. And that's what's cool about Optifine. You could control over these specific particles Turn them on, turn them off, do whatever you want as far as specific particles go, but just know any particles you turn on will lower your FPS and has a chance of increasing lag. From there, we can move on to the other tab. Where in here, there's truthfully not much you need to do as far as performance. Show FPS, I recommend turning this on. That's going to show your FPS all the time in the top left. That is a very, very cool thing about Optifine. I always like to know what my FPS is at. Everything else here is kind of personal preference. You can turn your weather off if you hate weather in single player worlds. Same thing with time. You can set the time to a specific time if you want. Full screen, 
I wouldn't recommend playing full screen. It is going to decrease FPS, but if you do want to play full screen, you can turn that on here as well. Autosave, I would recommend turning that to six minutes. So that is a huge thing because autosave lag can actually be pretty common in Minecraft. So turning that to six minutes means you could lose up to six minutes of your work, but you're not getting as much lag from the saving. Last but not least, I would actually turn off show GL errors. If you have any GL errors in chat in Optifine, it's actually okay. It's normal, right? You can do that. No worries. And so because of that, I'd recommend turning off GL errors because you don't need to see them. They're not going to cause any issues. Just turn them off right there. So there you go. That is how we can set up Optifine. Kind of everything is covered there. Let's go ahead and jump in game here. We'll go into this world because we want to see what this FPS is. My guess is we're going to be getting uh, probably over 200 FPS easily. More is a very, very possible here. If we look in the top left, we'll be able to see actually not getting over 200 FPS on load in. Kind of surprising to me, if I'm being honest with you. But overall, there we go. As we're walking around, we are topping over 200, 300 FPS. That is actually one thing that we've got set up here. So basically, when you're standing still, more chunks are loading than when you're moving. So if we move around here, it's loading less chunks. If we stand still, the FPS might actually drop some more because we're loading chunks around us. So that's something to keep in mind. However, like I said, I would recommend coming in here and limiting your FPS to about 60. You really don't need more than that. You especially don't need more than 90 FPS. FPS. Also, I said I was going to play shaders, so we're going to limit our FPS to 90. We're also going to turn here to make up ultra fast shaders, one of my favorite shaders packs. And if we go into shaders options, you can see there are different profiles here. We were running medium, but let's go ahead and do, wait for it, we're going to do the low profile setting, which is going to give us a bit more FPS. Click done, click done again, come back in here, and we'll see that we are limited. That first number is what we're looking at. That's our stable average FPS, and uh, 5960 is being achieved perfectly. And look at that. Shaders is absolutely beautiful. Love it. Let's unlimit our FPS and see what we're actually spiking to here. So if we turn this all the way up to unlimited, we'll be able to see that we are getting over a hundred FPS while running shaders. That is very, very impressive. Now, keep in mind that if you don't have a dedicated graphics card, shaders will eat your PC alive. If it's just integrated like Intel graphics or even AMD, it will just eat your PC alive. But overall, you can see what is possible with Mega Ultra Fast Shaders. Let's say we want to go ahead and quickly activate the, you know, next level here, which is going to be the medium shaders. It is going to lower FPS some, but still getting over 200, 100 FPS very consistently with a shaders pack installed. And that's the power of using the right shaders pack with the right Optifine settings. Amazing. So, nevertheless, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more incredible content every single day of the week. We post amazing Minecraft videos here, but those are the best Optifine settings for 1.19.2. Let me know what you think about them in the description, and let me know what your FPS is in the description down below as well. My name is Nick, and I'm out. Peace.